another sticker on the board. This is um, Dream Steam. Received that yesterday from Germany. Uh, I've sent him one of mine over. Dream Steam. If you bought it any time on YouTube, go and have a look at him. The board's getting pretty full now. We're really uh, quite chuffed on that. So we're just doing a catch up tonight. So I'll come back in a second. Hi guys, uh, just thought I'd do a little catch up. It's Friday night uh, and I haven't done a great deal of anything to be honest with you um, because uh, in my last video I decided I was going over to my friend's house that had passed away and his wife wanted to clear the garage and uh, I'd already sold the big beaver miller machine for him and I think he'd cleared his lids and just kept his Myford which his daughter my goddaughter is going to have uh, Emily, she's keeping that so I, I spent a bit of time sorting through all the gear that belonged to Myford um, and putting it with it and in the drawers underneath it for her because uh, she obviously wants to keep it but she's never used a lathe and no idea how to use one which I said I'll, I'll give her a few little pointers uh, to the best of my ability of course just to get her off and started once she moves house um, but um, what I wasn't expecting with the garage were absolutely a shocker with gear but of course it's a lifetime of engineering isn't it um, I mean Randy built some lovely steam engines as I said the little black five he built three Ford and trucks he built some lovely showman's steam engines with the canopy and everything on lovely and I think they were quarter scale so they were like seven foot long maybe eight foot nice lovely thing but all his gear um so i came home with boxes and boxes of stuff um mainly digital calipers and uh, dti's mag bases and an awful lot of uh, milling cutters a lot of my clacks and thread ones which i've got the clacks and chuck for uh, a big a, a big um, amount of them are worn out but there is some fairly good ones so I've there was quite a lot with broken teeth and things so I've thrown them what were good and I've only got one dovetail cutter a 60 degree and a 45 I've just bought for doing this job with this um, this rare tool post uh, there were a lot of different dovetail cutters in quite good condition with like 10 mil shank on them uh, and I thought, yeah, it'd be great then. So I've got those. Uh, and there's some uh, dovetail cutters as well, you know, slot cutters. So quite a few of those. And then there were a box of gear cutters, which my Miller machine is not an horizontal. But, you know, you could put one in and do a, a cut sideways on, I guess. Um, there's about half a dozen of those, brand new, all different types. I don't know much about gear cutters, but they all look new. And... Uh, the teeth on them all look good. Uh, so basically the tool post holder, I've gone no further with it and I'll tell you why. It was a nightmare cutting this and then doing it with the axle as you know. But I've got a big slice of this to cut out to take this uh, other piece that goes in it. Uh, and the only way I could do it is with my hacksaw. And I'm not doing that. I'm sick of having a stiff shoulder. So behind me here, there's my bandsaw and there's my pillar drill here, which are both Aldi items, Ferrex. This is okay, it drills holes, it's not bad. Uh, the bandsaw's quite good, it's okay, it's uh, vertical obviously, and it's great for profiling wood. Uh, I did all my pergola outside, which one day I'll show. I cut all fancy shaped uh, corner, you know, like bracing pieces that go in the corners. Uh, and I did them in 6 by 2 and I made a profile out of one and marked it all out and then uh, I copied it and made like 10 of them and it was great for that uh, and it cuts steel and I've put a bimetal uh, 14 TPI blade in it so it cuts steel but it's never going to cut all like that block of steel you, you'd, you'd push yourself over, you'd push it over 
So that brings me back to my friend Randy's house. So I bought from them a lovely, it's Sealy, but it's the Sealy Industrial uh, Pillar Drill, and it's nearly a metre high, it's going to go here. Uh, and, but it's got the proper big round rotating bed that rotates that way and that way. Uh, it's got the lock on it and then it's got a, a rack on it up the side so you can slacken the bed and you can wind it up and down. Fantastic. Uh, it's very rusty, it's been stood for a lot of years. It's got a lovely keyless chuck in it, of which she gave me another one too. Uh, big one, 16mm keyless chuck. Uh, and uh, a nice Jacobs with it as well, which wants cleaning up. Um, so I, I, bought, I brought that home, my lad helped me carry it, we, we got his compressor, my lad's bought that for his garage. Um, but what they were, and I, I, until I set off home, didn't think I really needed them, uh, which was a bandsaw. And it's, um, I don't know what make it is, but it's your common or garden bandsaw, but it's the one that drops down. It's the same one as Blondiax, uh, what's her name, Quinn. She was showing one the other week. I think it's more or less the same as that, which is probably a grizzly, is that? But this is probably, again, um, go on, Sealy, probably Sealy or Draper or something. Uh, but it's substantial, it's cast. Uh, and it's on wheels, but stood up, it's, well, stood down. The motor sticks up to just over a metre high. And that won't go under my bench. So I've cleared all my bench out. But having looked on YouTube, there's quite a few guys what they've done is they've made a wooden base for them and lowered them so they'll fit under the bench otherwise they need to be stood alone somewhere and I ain't got room for that uh, but thinking about it it's on a steel frame uh, only a tin thing uh, with like wheels at one end so you pick one end up and it'll wheel and you put it down and it's back on four feet uh, and I thought yeah I bet I could cut like 150 mil all the way around off them and replace these wheels where they belong uh, and it'll just be lower down but that I don't mind bending down just to put a bit of stock in and it'll fit under my bench so that's what I'm on with because hopefully uh, it's Friday now and on Monday me and my son are going to go back um, there were a lot of stuff she was saying do you want this, do you want this, do you want this and I was saying no, no, no and then when I come away I thought no I should, I should take it because if I don't it's going in a skip she's going to get a skip I think it's 270 quid and everything's going in it. So I'm going back Monday and probably Tuesday and I'm going to thoroughly go through it all because there's a lot of stuff. Drill sets. I mean, I, I brought a box home of drills and um, they're all got tape around each drill and the number drills. He didn't have the block for it, obviously. And then there's little 35mm um, photo tubes, what the 35mm film used to go in. And each one's got a number on top. When you open it, there's a drill bit in it. And some of them are so fine you can hardly see them. The number drills go down to a few thou. I probably never use them, but they don't want to go in a skip, do they? Really don't. Uh, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to bring the um, bandsaw home. There's also, I've got a, a Sealy bench grinder that I bought cheap. Uh, when I got it home, sorry, when it was delivered, I got it out on the bench and I ran it and it ran fine. A bit wobbly, but it ran. Uh, and then when I turned it round I realised a big split right across the casting at the back. So I contacted the company and they said don't send it back, we'll refund your money. So they refunded my money, so that was for now. It works fine but it's always in back of my mind a thing could explode. Uh, at Randy's there's a lovely, lovely bench grinder and it's slightly up, it's probably about this, this high, if you can see, maybe, maybe 14 inch high on a bit, bit of a pedestal -y thing. It goes on a worktop uh, with wheels on it and all the guards and everything. Filthy it once, a right good clean and maybe even a paint up. I'm probably going to buy that offer as well. Also, a great big buffing machine. Big, big motor with two long shafts, huge buffers on and what he used for obviously buffing all his steel up, what he was doing, or whatever, his brass or copper or whatever. Um, but I don't want that, I have nowhere for it. But I'm going to get the grinder, I think, and I'm going to get the bandsaw and probably go through all the stuff. What there were in red was some Bisley width, like the Bisley drawers, the same as Bisley drawers, A4 drawers, probably two, two and a half inch each, two of them, and I'm talking metre, 1100 eye, 
There's probably 20 odd drawers in each one. They're always slide out, no bearings are out in them, but they're lovely drawers. They're full of milling cutters and bits of files and drills and all sorts. So I'm probably going to buy them off her as well. I don't know where I'm going to put them, but I can't let them go in a skip. I just can't. You know, Randy turning his grave off in you that we're all getting thrown away. So I'm going to take as much as I can get in my van and uh, might do some giveaways in memory of Randy. If, uh, I don't know whether any of you guys will know him, but uh, there is people on YouTube that do know him. Uh, I know for a fact um, Keith, don't know a second, I forgot him, Keith anyway, he does uh, steam engines and stuff. He, he was a good friend of Randy's, we used to go see him. So uh, that's all it is for tonight, just that little little chelp of why I haven't done anything and that uh, I've got these on eBay, I've cleaned them up and hopefully they'll sell quickly. I'm selling them for cheap. So I think I've put drill on for 45 quid. That were 85 from Aldi. This were 137 quid, but I bought some right good quality at Moss um, by metal blades for it for cutting steel. Two brand new ones, there's one in it and a brand new one in the box. And they cost me 30 pound and there's 140 nearly for the machine. Uh, and I've put it on for 85 pound. It's like brand new, I've hardly ever used it, but see if anybody wants it. Just before I go, do you know what, well, two things, one I'll show you. When I got my box of stuff home, I've noticed there's a big pile of these brass looking things in the corner of his workshop. Uh, and one of them must have found its way into one of the boxes. I don't know if you're going to be able to read this. It says, clean out boiler every 14 days. It's obviously from some miniature steam engine. And it appears to be made of copper. It's non-magnetic. It's not brass. Now, the only other thing it could be is some sort of bronze. It's, it's a bit gold for brass. Don't know. It polishes up, but yeah. Just thought I'd show that, I'll just have a, a quick drink and then I'm going to show you something, you're going to tell me what it is. Anybody who's got any idea what the hell this is, because I haven't got a clue. So it's aluminium, it's got an 18 point some mil shaft uh, hole, bore for a shaft in it, and a keyway, so it obviously locks onto something. It obviously turns round. It's got four slots, <clears throat> and in them four slots, it's for lathe cutting tools, the brace carbide. This one's at the end there, where my finger is. There's one here at this end. Then the other two, I turn round and they're on the inside, and there's one cutter there, and there's one cutter there. No particular logic in my mind. Then there's all these holes that must take round cutters, and in it is a cutter there and a cutter there. Again, I ain't got a clue how, why, what, or anything. I'll try and show. Teeth. Teeth. Cutter. Yeah, that one there. And then one round there. And the orientation of that blade and that blade don't look the same. So I need to know from you viewers what the hell that is. What I will tell you is it was full of sawdust. Absolutely chocker. I cleaned it all out and blew it all out. Well, I didn't blow it out. I vacuumed it out. Um, it was full of sawdust with all these holes, but it's obviously made to fit all different holes. And it rotates, and it was full of wood shavings. So, yeah, it's for cutting wood, is it? Don't know. You tell me, what the hell is that? Come on, John. Get your hat on. Matty, I want to know what that is. Aaron, any of you, tell me what that is. Because I don't know. But it just looked good and I thought I'm bringing that home. Okay guys. Uh, 
that's enough for now but as I say I'm sorry I haven't done any more on this part two of this uh, making this tool holder which I do want to get on with but I'm going away shortly and I've got all this tackle to move around and hopefully uh, get organised in my garage again and then be able to cut steel properly so people been watching on YouTube you look at some of those you see you look on YouTube and you find ones you want to watch excuse me and um, it does seem them bandsaws are quite handy for doing the job. I was going to buy a power hacksaw, one of them little ones, the old ones, which it didn't job great. Um, but I saw this bandsaw and it, it, it's a horizontal one, but it lifts up and it, it becomes a vertical one too. I can't find bed for it, it might be there somewhere, I'll have another good look. Uh, but there's supposed to be a plate that fits on and it makes it into a, an upright bandsaw like this one for doing your profiling and things and cutting sheet. I'll have a look round for that, if not I'll make a new bed for it. Thanks for watching guys, I uh, don't know when will the next be putting a video out but I'm hoping soon the next one might be all drone footage from Forza Ventura, don't know. Ok guys, see you in a bit. Forgot to say, and everybody else does it, now I don't really do it much. Please click a like, apparently if you click a like it helps the algorithm and ends up moving your videos higher up the scale so when you search for one it's nearer the top than being 150 down there and never find it. Uh, even subscribe, click a bell, <laughs> I'm sounding like the salvage rebuilds now. Right, see you later.